Good morning and welcome. It's a great privilege to be speaking here at the Singapore FinTech Festival. I'm Sakib Sheikh, software engineer at Microsoft. And as you might imagine, with a title like that, I'm a bit of a techie. But for me, yes, I enjoy coding and I love my gadgets. But for me, technology is much deeper than that. Because technology is something that can truly create an equal world, something that can level the playing field. And I'm going to tell you my story and how in my life, without the advances in technology, I wouldn't be standing in front of you today. So I'm a software engineer, and I got my first computer when it, for my seventh birthday. And a few weeks after that, I actually became blind. And that started my great adventure and the journey that has led me to this point today. And throughout that journey, so many people helped me along the way. And so much incredible technology and the advances in technology can empower us all to do even more. Starting with the very basic things. So I think back to when I was a small child at that age of seven. And I went to a school for the blind. And I was very lucky to have a teacher who saw the potential. And she said, you need to learn to type, even though you're just a kid. And so I took lessons to type. And I learned to type without looking at the keyboard. And even though that's really that typewriter was very primitive technology for its day, that opened up so many more opportunities to me. Because suddenly, I could create things that other people could read. And that was a really big thing for me. And as I progressed, at the age of 10, I went off to a boarding school for the blind, which was incredible, because it was an environment where they really pushed the academics, but also gaining a level of independence. At the age of 10, I was making my own cups of tea and changing my bed. And by the time I left at 18, I was doing my own shopping and cooking my own dinners, like all the students there. And the backdrop for that was an environment where everything was set up just so, so that without the environmental barriers, there's so much that each of us is capable of. And there's so much technology behind the scenes. I grew up in this environment where there was technology producing the Braille textbooks, creating raised diagrams and charts and figures that we relied on in our studies, or reading out loud books. And it was in that environment that I got my start and that I got hooked on technology. And in that computer room, people asked me, how do you program? So even at that age, we had computers which would talk out loud to us that would, as you type, they will monitor what's happening and describe that out loud in a voice. And so that's where I got my start. And I went off to university to study computer science. And while I ultimately graduated top of my class, that was a bumpy ride in the, in the journey. I like this quote from Helen Keller. In the world, there's a lot of suffering, but there's also a lot of overcoming of it. And put this another way, I'm a engineer, so I'd say there are a lot of problems, but for every problem, there's a solution. I recently saw that the World Health Organization uh, changed its definition of disability from something about the person to just a mismatch between the person and their environment. And so in university, I was on my own. And I realized that I had to go and change that environment. So talking to lecturers to make sure that all the materials were accessible to hiring people to read the books for me. And when you have that inclusive environment, it really changes what's possible. So I went on to do my master's in artificial intelligence. 
But like I said, it was a bumpy ride. And sometimes I thought, my goodness, how am I going to overcome some of these challenges? But something a friend once said to me stuck with me, which is that you talk about creating solutions, and maybe one day you'll be creating the solutions to help others as well. And this is an interesting idea, that actually if we look at the technology around us, so much of it has come and been inspired by people with disabilities. So I put a few bullet points up here, and you can see that all of these technologies, from the telephone to talking computers, text-to-speech, speech recognition, flatbed scanners, and even touchscreens, are all technologies which got their start because someone had a problem and someone took the time to find the solution. So you imagine the smartphone in your pocket. It's got a touchscreen. That touchscreen was originally created by somebody who had repetitive strain injury and wanted a less painful way to type. Your phone can talk to you, if you imagine something like Siri or Google Assistant, and it can understand you. Again, things that were created for disabled people first. So this re idea really excited me, that actually we can think of disability as this driver of innovation. Wherever the, there are these extreme needs and extreme problems, we can find these incredible solutions. A story I like is the famous scientist Ray Kurzweil. Back in the 70s, he was on an airplane, sitting next to a blind gentleman, and he said, if I could invent anything, what would it be? And the blind man said, I wish I could read. And a few years later, we saw the Kurzweil reading machine, which was this giant contraption the size of a washing machine, costing many thousands of dollars. But you could put a book inside it, and it would read it out loud. But the creation of that reading machine is the lineage of text-to-speech, flatbed scanners, and optical character recognition that we have today. And in my career, I joined Microsoft 13 years ago. And for much of my career, I focused on mainstream technologies to prove myself in the mainstream, working on the search engine, on the Cortana Assistant, and many exciting projects. But a few years ago, I thought, I want to take this emerging field of artificial intelligence and my passion for empowering people with disabilities to do even more and put these things together. And so at one of our company-wide hackathons, I got together a team to see how can we combine artificial intelligence to empower someone with a disability. And after quite some time and many iterations and many late nights inventing, we came up with the Seeing AI app which is out there being used by many users and has helped complete over 10 million tasks. Let's take a look at what that's like. Seeing AI is a Microsoft research project for people with visual impairments. The app narrates the world around you by turning the visual world into an audible experience. Point your phone's camera, select a channel, and hear a description. The app recognizes saved friends. Jenny near top right, three feet away. Describes the people around you, including their emotions. 28-year-old female wearing glasses looking happy. It reads text out loud as it comes into view, like on an envelope. Ken Lawrence, P.O. Box. Or a room entrance. Conference 2005. Or scan and read documents like books and letters. The app will guide you and recognize the text with its formatting. Top and left edge is not visible. Hold steady. Lease agreement. This agreement. When paying with cash, the app identifies currency bills. 20 US dollars. When looking for something in your pantry or at the store, use the barcode scanner with audio cues to help you find what you want. Campbell's tomato soup. When available, hear additional product details. Heated microwave full on height. And even hear descriptions of images in other apps like Twitter by importing them into Seeing AI. A close up of Bill Gates. Finally, explore our experimental features like scene descriptions to get a glimpse of the future. I think it's a young girl throwing a frisbee in the park. Experience the world around you with the Seeing AI app from Microsoft.
this is just the beginning. I'm just so excited by the possibility that artificial intelligence has to offer. Because as it's at its key, artificial intelligence are systems which can observe and learn the patterns and then describe things as we saw in those images. We show it images of currencies and now it is able to describe the currency in front of me or read text or recognize my friends. I'm really excited to think one day we're all going to be walking around with wearables with these personal assistants that will take the best of humans and the best of artificial intelligence and bring these together to make an even more stronger combination. I think, for me, I want that little friend sitting on my shoulder telling me what's around me. For someone with challenges hearing or in a loud environment, it might be transcribing the text in real time. And for someone in a foreign country who doesn't speak the language, you might have that translator, which is translating the text in real time. So this is just the beginning. Some of these technologies are there today, but they're going to get better and better, faster and faster. So I'm excited to see where this goes. And I'd like to show you a few projects from my colleagues at Microsoft. We have so many peoples who are non-verbal, but still have so much to say. I want the exact same information that my hearing friends have. There are barriers to communication everywhere, but I think it's time we look at the barriers as opportunities to reach out to everyone. Soundscape fills in a lot of the mental map as you move. Approaching intersection. You can just put it in your pocket and go. With ALS, you become locked in. But we see technology as a way to give back what ALS has taken away. There's no better feeling than to hear a child say something that they've wanted to say and the look on their face after they've been able to say it. When it's reading, I see spaces between the words, and it's easy to focus on. Andre realized that here was something that could change his life. Now that I have my phone, I can see exactly what was said, and that's been a huge help to me. The system is learning as it goes, and the accuracy has improved tremendously. Students can pick any language that they choose to receive the information. It's like we jumped into the future. Because communication is very important for all of us, and we just want to be together and not feel left out. Aider les personnes avec autisme à communiquer, il y a des images. Je parle, je donne une information à Arthur, et elle est traduite par l'application El Picto instantanément en pictogramme et après d'une façon orale. Va t'habiller et te brosser les dents. On va pouvoir remettre en place une communication qui est plus spontanée. Je crois que ça vraiment, ça aide à recréer du lien. Both my wife and I are totally blind, and we have a three-year-old son that's in preschool. He can see, but his parents can't. So to be able to know what's going on at his school is everything. The Seeing AI app has the ability to allow me access to the visual world. Artificial intelligence is beginning to have an impact on the lives of people with disabilities, but it's, it's only going to grow. There is still so much out there uh, to be done. I am so excited by the possibilities. The potential for technology to truly impact our lives, to improve our lives for the better, is enormous. I can't wait to see in the years to come, as artificial intelligence gets better and better, what are the possibilities? I can't wait to see what all of us together come up with. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. What a man and what a story. <laughs> Sakib's story shows how technology can help find innovative solutions to real problems. It shows how innovation guided by empathy can help create a more inclusive society. And of course, it's a story that's an inspiration to all of us to do better, to be better, and to help others. That is why we asked Sakib to kick off the third edition of the Singapore FinTech Festival this morning. Because Sakib's story exemplifies what Singapore's own FinTech journey is all about. Innovation, inclusion, inspiration. Innovation because we want to do, we want to find better ways to do things. Inclusion because we want to benefit as many people as possible. Inspiration because amidst all the challenges around us, there is hope for a better world. Please join me once again in thanking Sakib Shaikh for being here with us today. Thank you. Thank you. I'll come to your side. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>